Hi, I'm Ross, and I'm here with my friend James, and today we are going to be talking about the 90s Mortal Kombat movies, because there's a new Mortal Kombat movie out, and we wanted to be educated. We wanted to make sure we didn't miss a single thing, and so we didn't play the games, and instead we watched two movies from the 90s. So, this was my first time actually sitting down and watching these movies all the way through. I've seen clips, and I've seen people discuss them over the past decade or so, but I've never actually had really enough interest in Mortal Kombat itself to really go back and watch them, but I I'm glad I did. There was there was some interesting stuff in there. I don't feel like I wasted any time. Speci well... Well, specifically with the first one. Yeah, okay. The second one was kind of just a ride of its own. I would describe the second one as a waste of time, primarily. <laughs> Never give up hope. So first movie, uh, 1995. I would say this was more boring than anything. It wasn't really outright bad. It was just kind of flat. Yeah, I really had no expectations, no real idea of what I would get. I mean, it's a video game movie from the 90s of PG-13 Mortal Kombat. I figured it would be a lot of cheesy fun, and I guess that's what I got. I don't know about you, but there was a lot of cuts in the first movie that mm -hmm. felt like they skipped a whole scene or an explanation as to what was supposed to happen. Yeah. Structurally, it's kind of weird because it starts off moving at a pretty consistent pace and you're learning about these characters and about the world. And then when Mortal Kombat actually starts happening, it's just fight, 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 fight. There's no breaks, no in-between, which... In a way, I didn't mind because that is kind of what you're there for, but the fights aren't very interesting or mm. well choreographed or well filmed or well edited or well performed. So... <laughs> it is probably the closest video game adaptation movie that is like the actual story of the game. Especially compared to Paul W.S. Anderson's other forays into video game movies that we're familiar <laughs> with. The fact that this was so accurate kind of surprised me at least you know given how little i know about mortal Kombat in general i understand the concept is they are in tournament and they fight and in this movie they are in tournament and they fight so i can't complain frankly i don't understand why you would watch this and ever let him make a movie again but it was the 90s so well it made money that's why i guess so did, did this make a ton of money i don't I, it made more money than it should have uh, yeah <laughs> i agree no matter how much it made i agree <laughs> but also uh we weren't the kids that you know we grew up playing mortal Kombat and then watched this movie for yeah. the first time and being like oh, my, my video game became a movie yeah it's and a very I, different perspective that we have your brother's soul is mine i get it but i was born in 1998 so i have no obligation to pretend this is a good movie and i have my own nostalgic movies that i will say are you know quote unquote good but cheesy fun is really what it means, you know? Mm -hmm. There's not that much to talk about because it's a really simple movie. It's very straightforward. You meet the main characters. They each have one scene where they, you know, basically tell the camera what their deal is. <laughs> and then they show up at Mortal Kombat. The fights don't really have that punch, that real punch you want. Or like, yes, those deaths sell, those moments sell because... These characters just kind of show up and fight. The game is basically just a series of loosely connected fights, and this movie is a series of loosely connected fights, so they did capture some essence of the Mortal Kombat experience. It's fun to see all these, you know, iconic characters like Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Mm -hmm. Their costumes, I felt, were a bit too similar to the games. They were very Simple. spirit Halloween, yeah. Yes, they, were <laughs> they did not look like they cost a lot of money to make. no. I would kind of be curious to see what the R-rated version of this movie would have looked like, and I feel like that almost might have conflicted with the tone they're going for, because this is a very family-friendly movie, even with the premise of a bunch of people have to kill each other. That's not the missing piece, though. If you add more blood to this movie, it wouldn't make it good or interesting. It's still just a boring video game movie. <laughs> I can't point to anything specific in this movie that I would say that was done very well. What would you say is the highlight of this movie? The animatronic Goro. Looking at it the first time, I remember messaging you and I was like, is 
is that CGI or a practical? Yeah, no. Like, what is that? I don't think I would. I would love to see them try a CGI Goro in '95 because I think oh. it would look similar to the CGI reptile, yes. which is terrible. I yeah yeah. <laughs> You uh, want to be fair, but it's it's god awful. It's horrible. It looks like uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. On one hand, I want to say you know it was 1995, but on the other hand, I could say, hey, just don't do that. But the animatronic Goro was very impressive. It did you know look a bit weird here and there, but overall, it was pretty cool. The mouth was really wonky. Yes. That was the main thing I noticed. <laughs> but the way it moved was, it, it worked. It functioned. This whole movie functions. That's the nicest thing I can say about it. Lawless victory. I do understand why this did well. It's it's easy to look back now and say like, oh, it's dated, it's cheesy, whatever. But I get why this was a hit. I get why people would want to see more of this. If I was a kid in the 90s uh, watching this, I would yeah. definitely love it. Personally, I always find it difficult to imagine, you know, how do you make a good Mortal Kombat movie or really a good any video game movie? Because... I don't think there's been one yet. I know some people want to say, oh, what about? No, don't even bother. It's bad. It's a bad movie. <laughs> They're all bad. I mean, I don't really have much more to say about this movie. It's it's fine. It's yeah, all right. It does so very little and it does most of it poorly. But the stuff it does well is kind of fun. So two stars. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Excitement. People tend to say this is actually the good one. Like, oh, Mortal Kombat's actually pretty good. And I did kind of hope that on some level I could feel that, but I think it's mostly nostalgia talking when people say that. Okay, if we were going to assemble a Mortal Kombat tournament in real life, which three fighters would you want defending Earthrealm? Uh, Vladimir Putin, Nicki Minaj. Okay. And Tim Curry, but now. I... <laughs> Adam Levine. More like Adam Latrine. Because <laughs> his music is shit. <laughs> I think that brings us to the real star of the hour, which is <laughs> Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which more than lived up to its reputation Ooh. as one of the worst sequels, if not movies, ever made. I would say if there is a wrong decision to be made in any aspect of filmmaking, Mortal Kombat Annihilation makes that bad decision. <laughs> From the opening scene where they're jumping back and forth between this terrible green screen footage and decent looking on set footage. And it's just, you can't tell who anyone is or where anyone is or what anyone's saying. Half the lines sound dubbed. All of the action looks terrible. Johnny Cage gets murked five seconds in. It's just... He's not the same Raiden. The Did you movie? not notice they recast Raiden in the second movie? Are you blind? What's wrong with you? I I didn't realize that. What do you mean you didn't realize that? Actually, let me see. Let me like, Are you let insane? Me compare the faces. What do you mean compare the faces? <laughs> They're two completely they sound completely different. They have different accents. Well, would you look at that? Yeah. <laughs> I guess they were just so good at everything that happened. What? I had very little idea what was going on ever from when the movie started to when the movie ended. Watching this movie, I just kind of kept thinking to myself, what were they thinking? Like, why? 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 Why those weird underground balls that they traveled around the world in? Why did they film that scene where Nightwolf is a wolf like that? <laughs> This movie looked shockingly cheap for a major motion picture, especially a sequel. Maybe they were just planning to fix everything in post and they didn't realize, oh no, we should have fixed it <laughs> before pre. <laughs> <laughs> On some level, I know these movies are just silly, cheesy video game movies, whatever, but I was kind of wondering, is there going to be any characterization, any real story at all besides... I have to go here and do this so I can go here and do this so I can go here and do this. It feels like a video game in that way. What's the deal with your arms? I've known you one minute. And you dissing me already? Why was Jax in a lab if he was just wearing that stuff over his arms and it could just be torn off with no injury? And why was he by himself? There was no doctors. And where'd the robots come from? 
And why did they shoot the explosion jump on a terribly obvious green screen? Every complaint you have about Annihilation can just boil down to, why? Why did they do that? It's not quite so bad it's good, and it's not quite too bad to enjoy. It's just this weird middle ground where it's kind of fascinating to watch the ineptitude unfold. Can you imagine seeing this in a theater? Can you imagine sitting down, having paid real money, and watching this in a theater? If people are curious to see what a truly fundamentally broken movie looks like, Mortal Kombat Annihilation is a great example. The merger has begun. Earth is under attack. And it is glorious! Do you think Shao Kahn is the worst villain yet committed to screen? Because I think there's a decent argument to be made for that. I think it's weird they added this element of Shao Kahn's dad wants to take over. Oh, and Shinnok, that's in the game. Yeah, it just makes Shao Kahn really lame, and that's not really the characterization you want for your evil overlord. And I feel like if they had had him have it together more, I just don't know why they made him such a buffoon. Raiden is of no concern to us. Someone somewhere surely had maybe a good idea for what to do with this movie. And I think if you really, really, really squint, you can kind of see something interesting going on. But the execution of literally every single second of this movie is just so incompetent that it kills any chance of that working would you have wanted to see a third one of these like what would that no. even have been <laughs> this was just another one of night wolf's crazy tests we could have killed each other robin shu robin Shao. i don't know how to say it sorry i'm sure someone will be mad at me but he was great i he, liked him he was him. the best part of all of them i'd say yeah he, he was into it he was really into he it. was really trying he was pushing it he became more of the main character in the second one and he carried it as well as he could i think the cast was trying somewhat but the material they have is just such garbage that mm -hmm. you can't salvage it you can't do anything with that the first movie didn't really do anything for me but it did feel like they were trying to do something. The production design was really interesting. There was an attempt. Mm -hmm. There was an attempt. But Annihilation just felt like such a shrug, such a wet fart of <laughs> nothing. It's like it was cut to be unexciting. It's like it was cut badly on purpose. And part of me wonders, is that the editor's fault? Or were they just handed all this garbage footage and went, what can I do with this? <laughs> Yeah. If your final battle had just been these two guys having a terrible hand-to-hand -hand fight, I would have preferred that over what appears to be 1970s CGI. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't get anything right in a Mortal Kombat movie, the action might as well be fun, and these ones couldn't even do that, so I just don't see much to really praise about them, because they just seem really nothing to me. Come to a little tournament, he said. Be good for the career, he said. What are your final thoughts on the 90s Mortal Kombat films? For the target audience and for what it was, it was fun. It was good, and I enjoyed it. Uh, and then Annihilation. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, watching it. <laughs> I think Annihilation may be one we revisit, but never sober. Oh, definitely. Every time I've watched a video game movie, I've thought, this is pretty bad, and they should stop doing this. <laughs> and having watched examples further back in time, I cannot say my opinion has changed at all. The movies kind of went in one ear and out the other. There just, there wasn't much to latch onto. There are a lot of fixes you could suggest for these movies, but uh, the real fix would be never making them or watching them. Oh.